ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA Welcome to the show I am your hostess Fatush Kebab. Surprise! Hey everybody, it's just me, Connie. I'm just fooling with y'all. Now y'all are probably wondering what I'm doing in this here getup. Well, I have you know that this here is a traditional muslin outfit. American style. That's the beautiful thing about America. We take a good thing and make it even better. It's like when we took chicken and made chicken fried steak. Now, I don't want you all thinking that I've gone native on y'all or nothing. That hasn't happened, I, I promise you. You know what? Let me, let me just go ahead and take this off because you know what? I don't want you all coming in here with your shotguns and your, your baseball bats and your torches like you did when that nice Muslim family moved into town and, you know, you burned their house down. So, you know what? I, I just put this on. There we go. And you know what? I need my glasses. I'm sorry. <clears throat> As most of you know, anyways, I've already been born again in the eyes of the Lord. Twice if you count my bankruptcies. Oops. Oh, shoot. Let me get that. Sorry, everybody. You know, I had a friend of mine tease out my hair maybe a little, little too much, but here we go. So anyways, so yeah, I've already been born again a couple times. And, well, technically, I guess five times if you count my uh, three divorces, so. But on today's show, I want to show you all some slides of a recent trip I took to the Holy Land. Now, I was over there as part of the Arms for Armageddon program as, with my church group. Now, that's where we go over there and help arm them, our Jewish settlers, with guns and, you know, whatever else they need, like pornography and moonshine and, you know, just things like that. And, you know, it was weird because I really thought that with them being so good with money and all that, you know, they wouldn't need any kind of help getting these things. But, you know, I just happened to have a couple extra firearms just laying around the double wide. So it worked out perfectly. And also got to unload a whole bunch of canned goods on them, too. And don't bother sending your, uh, your canned sauerkraut because for some reason they just don't like it over there. I don't know why. I guess nobody does because nobody ever eats the damn stuff. It just accumulates in my cabinet. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyways, you know, when I was heading over there, I was expecting some kind of great big culture shock. Because, you know, I'm a Midwestern type gal. And, you know, if I'm not within line of sight of a Walmart or an Applebee's, you know, I'm, I'm reaching for my Xanax, honestly. I mean, I just, I can't deal with it. But, you know, the weirdest thing is that the Mideast is a lot like Arizona. I mean, think about it. I mean, they're both hotter than heck, and there's gunfire going off everywhere. But I guess the main difference is that the people in the Mideast are a heck of a lot friendlier than those in Arizona. So, um, well, let's go ahead and cue up the first slide. And slide one is of the Whalen Wall. I guess there was some sort of fancy temple there at some point, but it was destroyed a long time ago. Now, it seems to me that these people, what they need to do is just stop whining and just rebuild the dang thing. I just don't understand it. These people really need Dr. Phil over there because they could really use his help and he could just make a mint off of these people. And, you know, I'm like a positive type person. I don't let the bad things, the sad things get me down in life, you know. I mean, there's times where I just want to call it quits and throw in the towel. But you know what? I get right back up. It's like when my gout acts up something. Now this next here slide is of me in a mosque. And I'm wearing a traditional Muslim outfit, which is the one I got at the Halloween store a couple of years ago, but I was always too heavy to fit into. 
Now, for the ignorant, mosque is like a great big giant church, only they worship a different god there. And I'm glad I'm the only one that was wearing that outfit. If I saw another woman wearing that outfit, I think I would have died. This here next slide is me wearing a burqa that I got from the American Embassy. They recommended that we wear this just so we could fit in a little easier. And here I am. I guess I stumbled on what seemed like an NRA-style picnic, and it was so much fun. Except for some reason, someone kept trying to set fire to me. I don't know why. Now, the shirt next side, oh, wait a minute. That's from my trip to Africa. I took back in the 80s. That was on my Taste of Africa tour. I don't know how the heck that got in here. Now, here's where I feel like I'm finally fitting in. And that's me posing with the little Palestinian boy. Isn't he the cutest thing? I give it little brownie a nickel. But he did try to spit on me when I had him try to shine my shoes. But I did let him keep the nickel, though. Now here's me after eating one too many delicious hot dogs wrapped in delicious bacon. For some reason, you can't get a decent pork hot dog or sausage over there, so we had to bring our own in a cooler. And, well, I guess for, we forgot to change the ice for a day or so. Now, in the Muslimistically and Judaistically inclined world, the pig is a filthy animal. I mean, of course the pig is a filthy animal. But it sure is delicious.